Hey everyone, hello there. It's been a little bit over a month since the game came out, so it's about time we venture outside of the shrines to go and do some shrines. We're not making the same mistake we did last time with Breath of the Wild, where we had half of the blessing shrines left at the end of the game. You see, normal shrines take us about two to three hours to come up with and execute the impractical solutions. For blessing shrines though, they tend to be closer to 20 hours per shrine because of the absolutely stupid things we have to do. So let's kick off the blessing shrines with a good old bear venture! At the end of Breath of the Wild, we took a bear, specifically everyone's favorite lady, Barry the Bear, through all three labyrinths. Man, I miss that bear. Anywho, doing it all again! But this time, instead of three labyrinths, we have nine! Some of them deep, deep underground. And some are in space! And we gotta do some research before we can get there. But Barry had a little bear of her own, named her Barry. That's great, makes our lives easier, unlike that whole Terry Jerry situation. And Barry, not Barry, but Barry. She's a defiant little thing. But she's also a more than willing test subject for all the things we need to do in order to figure out how to get where we want to go. So, who's ready to do some science? Bear science. Barents. Bariants. Alright, the plants in the lab have been cooking some stew, but also been working on a way for us to help demonstrate everything we need to do in order to get a bear to space. Now we've had some changes to how bears are handled. Firstly, riding a bear now handles like, well, riding a bear. They're literally just all over the road. It's frustrating, but the safest option for long distance travel. The safety is for Barry's sake. We mass produce fairies in the lab, so Link is basically a god now, and he's in no danger whatsoever. Alright, he still feels pain, but he's not in any danger. Probably. Alright, the PR team tells me we probably shouldn't call it bear science. But we've come up with a name that's much, much better. Shrines! Shrine science, keep up. Another change we've got in store is bear evaders. Back in the day, we could just scoop them up and lift them right up. But Barry is quite chonk. She can be lifted with Ultra Hand extremely slowly. Add a hover stone to the mix and we can lift it up pretty much anywhere. Slowly. Freezing is also very, very different now. In Breath of the Wild, we had to freeze by hand. Very laborious and not good for the bears. We could safely freeze seven-ish times before things went really, really bad. Barry here is built different though. We can get a whole lot more freeze for our token. Instead of seven, we get a whopping... Yeah, that's the number we can live with. These frost emitters here normally deal a small amount of damage whenever they freeze something, as seen with this test book oblin here. A test oblin. But Barry? Nope. Left her freezing for like three hours and nothing. A bear with 100-ish health definitely should have died during that time. Even at one damage over the course of three hours, that would be... Let's see, two freezes a minute, uh, 120 freezes per hour, 360 damage. And that, last we checked, is bigger than 100, but we'll triple check. After a while, Barry gets tired and despawns. No surprise there at all. But, with Barry being able to be constantly frozen, we have a means to ensure that she isn't going to despawn on us. We just have to transport her. And that is a very, very delicate matter. Here's a simple cage wheel contraption. A test oblin can be transported with absolutely no issue whatsoever. I mean, it will die because it's not immune to ice. But Barry makes this entire contraption just not work. It requires much, much more to get this bear moving stably. So you could bus her around, I guess. But even this can be too fast. If Barry goes too fast, she'll hit the sides or even the top of the contraption and takes damage. And then is immediately refrozen. And then immediately takes damage. Point is, she dies really, really fast if you move too fast. The more you know. Yeah, we definitely don't need to call this bear science. Alright, now that we have a general idea of all the mistakes that we're about to make, we can now go to the first labyrinth. North Lomay Labyrinth. Maze. It's a maze. We talked about this last time. Getting there is kind of annoying, as mentioned before, but there's no actual challenge getting there. It's just a lot of walking and dealing with Barry not going on the road at all. The challenge of this labyrinth is the same as Breath of the Wilds. We just gotta get the bear through. But this time we have the added obstacle of anti-bear jam being everywhere. I don't know what's made of, but bears hate it. So we're gonna have to get Barry across this ourselves. 
And the Zonai here, or whoever this is, may have their fancy jams. But we've got gumption. Not entirely sure how we quantify gumption, but we got it. And to get across, presenting a barricade that holds a bear indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, but longer than anyone would ever need. A Mark I Barricade. Has an opening up top to enjoy the outdoors and whatnot. We got a patented angled chili willy here, and a big juicer to keep it going. Man, what can't those lab plants think up? The barricade cryopod thing by itself isn't enough to get Barry over the jam though. We still gotta be able to move it. But we can just slap a bottom on this bad boy, and just like that, boom! Movability. Kind of. We tried all kinds of things though. We tried pushing it. Fans, rockets, those rockets were a mistake though. It just instantly turned her into a pile of meat. We won't be using that again anytime soon. Did I say we tried? Well, you see, the plants in the lab tell me we do have something to reassure some of you that might be worried about all these bears. Time travel. Because Zelda games love to use it so much, we figured we'd do it too. The lab plants have a way to rewind time back to specific save points. Reloading points which branch off into an infinite number of realities. We harvest the information and research from their moral actions to bring our bear on a wonderful and safe adventure. After seeing all of their failures, we eventually went with the slow-moving yet safe option of fans with carts. The mix of snow and ground here makes sleds not a great option, so we went with carts. We're gonna go slow in some parts, and eh, that's okay. Worked pretty good to get her over the jam, and contained her while we took care of the tickle monster here. Our little contraption here worked great, until it didn't. Everything just started falling apart, and there were some sections which we couldn't rebuild it fully correctly, and then it wouldn't fit through some of the sections. But for reasons we're too lazy to look into, probably pine cones, she was more than willing to run over the jam here. Can't ride her through it though, she immediately kicks you off. So instead of leading the bear through like the old days, we just have to chase it through. Slowly, but surely. And there was even a spot where she just wouldn't go past. Shimming her through with a good old fashioned swiggity swoop to him, and got her past whatever was blocking her here. Again, probably pine cones. She really doesn't like pine cones, which is weird considering she's from the forest. Much like Breath of the Wild, the rest of the trip here is very straightforward, except for the bear lift, but nothing a Mark I bear evader can't fix. Putting it together in this tight space though was a bit too much to bear. Hover stones help the contraption from falling. And to be safe, we lifted up very, very slowly. Like, so slow. Yeah, we could've used rockets to speed it up, but we didn't. So sue us. <laughs> Alright, Legal is telling me I probably shouldn't tell people to sue us. Good and badly. So you know what, Legal? You can sue- <laughs> Carrier nice and slow and we are done with this shrine. But we're not done with the shrines for today. I really should look up what the shrine I just did is, huh? I don't know, we'll, we'll fix it in post. The second part of this labyrinth puzzle is easy. All right, I'm lying. It only took like 15 hours. The first step is to get Barry up there, which is actually easy with the Mark II Barra Cage, the Barrow Plane. Not really a plane though, it's more of an elevator, a space barrovator. Mark I. We did make a Barrow Plane though. I had to use the VOD for this section because someone, me, didn't have the second recording running. And I'm gonna fire that guy. All right, I probably shouldn't fire myself. With the cage that literally everyone uses for everything, we can safely contain our bear companion. Slap on some hover stones and use one of those infinite rockets you may or may not have from duplicating them back on 1.1.1. And after riding the space bearivator for a while, the sparivator, pull her in nice and slow. Reel her in, boys. Like real slow. Again, could have used rockets, but we're terrified after what happened to that one berry. Kind of thinking that maybe that isn't jam. Fun fact, bear respawn coordinates save up here, which is nice. So now we just have to save again and create another infinite number of universes to show us what not to do. The Mark II Spare Cage Evader thing is designed to fit through this maze in space. This is what Shrines is all about. It's all about asking how do we do it, not should we do it. The cage object here is just barely smaller than the smallest openings throughout the maze. So two hover stones go on the bottom, batteries go on top, we've got like zero wiggle room on the sides. And now the slow, slow transition throughout the whole maze, one rocket at a time. With two hover stones on here and all the other gizmos we've got going on, 
The rocket no longer damages Barry because the rocket cannot produce enough force to get to full speed. In each section, we have a time limit that if we forget about, it's all over, as hover zones last exactly 30 minutes. At which point, we have to do maintenance and rebuild the shuttle, or... Now so much happened here that I'm not going to be able to cover all in this short video. So, if you want to see more of what went into this nightmare, over on the second channel, to Cactus Plays, link in the description, we've started doing highlights of the Shrine Solutions as well. Behind the scenes kind of thing. They're usually about a week behind these videos, so no spoiling the main channel. You want to see me cry and go insane doing these things? Go sub, I can wait. Okay, I can't wait, but I'll put a link at the end too to remind you. But here's a short taste of what went into this. The freeze matic with steak edition. Mmm, steak. She's possessed by the devil! You're good. You're good. I still have to get the hover stone over there. It's a hover stone. Just hover. Because I want to land her here and then activate it and then continue on. Just spray your butt. In case anybody is wondering why the bear has to be frozen. <laughs> You guys remember when uh, Smeagol said, There's a snook in our boots. Ours boots? Ours is boots. Is. Or something, I don't know. Now, plenty of times throughout this place I would get stuck, and that's where the secondary hover stone comes in. Ultra hand to reposition it, get the spear cage, spear cage. I spelt it spear in my script, and I, I, I don't know why anymore. But hover stone, ultra hand, move cage into position, continue rocketing. After. I have no idea how long we make it to the first terminal. Activate it and continue on, but we had to know. And we risked literally everything to save and reload. Strience has gotta have risks. And for a reason I can only explain as everything probably uses the same code and setting respawn coordinates now because there's absolutely no reason on earth why a bear's respawn coordinates should save here. You spawn in on your mount inside of mazes in this game. Would have been real nice to have that in Breath of the Wild, but I guess Barry was in it for the adventure and the thrill of it, rather than the shrines. The second terminal has so much space. Building a barricade here was really easy. Lift it up, continue on through the maze. I got pretty good at navigating a bear through a space mage during this. Not a sentence I saw myself ever saying. Terminal 3 and Terminal 1 have a very, very small amount of space when assembling the cage, and it was a headache. If respawn coordinates didn't update, this would have been not impossible, but it really would have destroyed my patience. I had a scare before the fourth terminal. Things just went really out of control. I did manage to recover, though. Destroyed the cage on the fourth terminal because I needed a save, and now there's an updraft here to take you to the top. And this is where I learned to bear scoop, because I couldn't use my two pieces to try to sandwich below it. You know how you sandwich two things below a bear? Using the Link to rotate the cage, it is possible to wedge the cage between Link and Barry, and Link's physics ultimately win and scoop up the bear. Really wish I had realized that this whole time. Getting up to the fifth terminal is easy, up and over. At this point, we've ran a bear through Gloom Jam, Glam, shot it to space, navigated through a maze with no ground. We really should be done here, but we still gotta get her down. What kind of monster takes a bear to space and just leaves her there? Maybe those guys in those other Hyrule's mints and bears with rockets, but not us! Getting a bear back down, turns out, a little bit harder than getting it up. Remember earlier, the whole too fast make dead thing applies to falling too. Setting up a strong hovering bear evader and rocketing down, slow, but seemed good. These guys tried pulling it down real slowly. I don't remember how this one ended putting fans on the bottom and floating it down, allowing the fans to combat gravity. How'd that end? Slow fall seemed more and more like a bad idea. So instead, the idea was to overpower the hover stones with fans. And that thing worked well. Like, barricade one well. Until the cage was out of low gravity and gravity just reached up and grabbed it and it's gone. It did get better though. Getting to the shift in gravity, and then adding another hover stone to slow the fall even more, swapping out the hover stones halfway down, and just before reaching the ground, everything shut off and Barry kind of just ran her way all the way to the ground. I'm glad she survived, and I assume her running on the actual cage prevented the fall damage.
After too much panic, though, the craft was recovered. But then the Tickle Monster returned, because a Blood Moon happened at some point, apparently. And while fighting, everything broke and she's gone. But after that, patience was gone. Whole multiverse has been in shambles. They just started letting her fall, trying to brute force the bear, hoping she would run her way all the way back to the planet. Didn't end well. This tale does have a happy ending though. After all of their failures, we gave it a shot. Getting down to the re-entry point, and then assembling the fans from here. And it turns out, six is the perfect number and gives us the literal maximum speed we can safely return with. Welcome home, Barry. And now we're gonna throw you in that hole. Or, we were gonna. But it turns out all of the holes to the depths, there is this point where when Link crosses over it, it despawns everything that Link isn't standing on. Standing on and riding on are two different things. So many experiments done in order to understand what is happening here. We have the means of taking a bear down. The bear evaders are not the problem. The problem is the universe literally just deletes her and everything else, too. We even went as far as dropping down during the taming animation, an obscure state that may have been missed while crossing over this threshold, and she still vanishes. But this isn't gonna stop us, permanently at least. We once wrong warped a bear and we'll do it again if we gotta. But for now, two out of nine labyrinths down. Remember to Cactus Blaze, patent it, or subscribe. I'd probably recommend the second one. Also do it here. Alright, we're gonna go back inside of some shrines now. It's scary out here.